Dubai, the most luxurious city in the world. The world's most opulent destination is Dubai. Dubai was just a tiny village in the middle of the desert 50 years ago. Currently, Dubai represents the Middle East's opulence and is the greatest draw this region of the world has to offer. You have seen pictures of the Burj Al Arab, the man-made island that is home to the crescent-shaped skyscraper. It's also likely that you are aware that the tallest building in the world is located in Dubai, and that you have even seen Tom Cruise ascending it in a Mission Impossible movie. The Burj Khalifa is the name of such a structure, and it is 722 feet tall. Yes, you undoubtedly have some knowledge of this magnificent city's attractions. I would, however, love to have the opportunity to tell you so much more today. Here are all the extravagant and exorbitant items available in Dubai. But first, a brief lesson in history. How did Dubai transform from a tiny oasis in the desert to the lavish city it is today? Oil is the same reason that all the other United Arab immigrant cities have become so wealthy. Situated approximately 90 miles away from Dubai, Abu Dhabi is the world's richest metropolis, possessing 10% of the global oil reserves. The United Arab Emirates entered the world stage thanks to its oil production. Dubai saw an influx of millions of people and grew to become one of the Middle East's largest cities. But today, oil barely accounts for 5% of Dubai's income because its reserves aren't nearly as profitable as those of some of its UAE neighbors. The main sources of income for Dubai are trade, real estate, and tourism. Due to its increased reliance on sources of income other than oil, Dubai has emerged as the UAE's commercial hub. However, this modification hasn't stopped this extraordinarily wealthy metropolis from expanding. Dubai's population is expanding both horizontally and vertically. Indeed, Dubai is home to about 25% of the world's crane fleet. That's correct, just one UAE city is home to about 25% of all cranes worldwide. Dubai's strategy appears to be to simply keep constructing skyscrapers. The previously mentioned Burj Khalifa and the Burj Al Arab Hotel are two of these towers. More than half a mile is the height achieved by the Burj Khalifa. In fact, because of its height, the structure can swing several feet at its higher stories depending on the wind. However, the designers of this enormous structure did not ignore this. Because of the Burj Khalifa's unique shape, the vestibular system in the inner ear would not even be aware of the wobble. That is the ear's component that aids in balance, if there isn't any interruption weighing you down. Nestled hundreds of feet above the ground is the stunning five-star hotel known as the Burj Al Arab. Because of its distinctive design, the Burj Al Arab is currently the fifth largest hotel in the world. The hotel is comprised of 56 stories. Although the hotel has an official five-star rating, some have given this magnificent structure a seven-star rating. There is disagreement over who is the authority on luxury hotels, hence this seven-star designation is up for discussion. But whether it is a seven-star hotel or not, it is amazing. A night at the Al Arab's Royal Suite will set you back slightly more than $24. About 1790 square meters of 24 karat gold leaf cover the inside of the Burj Al Arab. However, nothing compares to the breathtaking vistas of the spotless city and the flawless gulf. In addition to erecting incredibly tall buildings, the city is eager to create artificial islands. The World Islands and the Palm Islands are two extremely ambitious initiatives that were made possible by a substantial amount of funding. In addition to costing $12 billion, 94 million cubic meters of sand were needed for the development of the Palm Islands. To put it into perspective, 94 million cubic meters of sand are equivalent to twice the size of the Empire State Building. 321 million cubic meters of sand were used to create the world islands, or the artificial islands that resemble the continents. If only you could factor in nine Empire State Buildings, which raises the price of Dubai's artificial islands by an additional $15 billion. To begin with, I'm not a huge fan of sand because it goes everywhere and is harsh and coarse. I did, however, have fun when visiting the Palm Island. Nothing exfoliates like the warm water of the Persian Gulf, as I've always claimed. But enough about artificial islands, huh? Now let's discuss the police force. Now when one thinks of luxury, they don't normally think of law enforcement, but in Dubai, they certainly do. The Dubai Police Department utilizes supercars as their patrol vehicles to attract tourists. This includes vehicles like the Lamborghini Aventador, which sells for about $400,000, the Ferrari FF, which costs about $500,000, and my personal favorite, the Aston Martin 177, which is reasonably priced at $1.79 million. Believe me when I say that nothing feels more like James Bond for a man than to floor an Aston Martin 177. Makes me want to go for a ride with mine immediately. In any case, driving these amazing vehicles is just Dubai being Dubai. Well, more power to them. After all, Dubai is the ninth safest city in the world. Naturally, the supercars aren't the only cause of this. 
Because the government of the United Arab Emirates is run by an Islamic constitutional monarchy, the country often has quite harsh rules. There are also some Sharia rules in Dubai. Therefore, be careful not to get caught smooching if you're on vacation with your significant other and checking out the fancy police force. If you do, you might end up deported. However, some locations in Dubai are far more tolerant because of the incredibly high volume of tourism. For example, alcohol service is allowed in Dubai in some establishments, such as hotels and clubs, but is not allowed in a traditional Middle Eastern context. It's claimed that only 15% of people living in Dubai are Emiratis, with the remaining 85% being from outside the city. Workers constructing hundreds of towers make up around half of the population, which makes some sense given the whole crane scenario. These laborers are primarily from Bangladesh, Pakistan, and India. This takes us to Dubai's less fortunate aspect, the class gap. It's fairly large. While Emiratis and other upper-class foreigners make incredibly enticing incomes, many immigrant workers live in less than perfect conditions and work in far less favorable conditions. In Dubai, there isn't much of a middle ground between the classes. However, like with any split nation, there's always a sport to unite the populace. That's the general notion, anyhow. And camel racing is this sport in this instance. I lost approximately 500,000 to a sheik in a camel race in Sharjah back in 1996, therefore, it's a sensitive topic for me. However, that was a different era. In Dubai, camel racing is comparable to American football in the United States. Additionally, Dubai's take on the sport substitutes him jockeys for. I started utilizing robots. As you can see, camel racing has a troubled history. In the past, young children were often coerced into riding camels, which resulted in human trafficking in less developed parts of the Middle East. Although it still occurs in Dubai, the kids are now replaced with robots. It may surprise you to learn that some of these little bots can run up to $10,000. A monkey drove the camel that cost me at $500. Alright, enough about camel racing. Dubai is working on some pretty crazy projects in the future. Dubai intends to construct a 4.3-mile stretch of the city that is entirely climate-controlled. It was revealed when Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the ruler of Dubai, a 48 million square foot mall. This miniature city will have a retractable dome, roads, parks, and a large pedestrian mall in addition to housing units and hotels. Monaco's size will more than double as a result of the enormous edifice. When you consider that Dubai experiences frequent highs of 115 degrees Fahrenheit, the concept begins to make sense. But when you include the expense, the idea starts to lose some of its appeal. Though official figures are still pending, estimations putting the price in the tens of billions of dollars have been made. And remember, if the laborers weren't pitifully underpaid, the cost would be substantially higher. A total of 20,000 rooms among 100 hotels and service divisions are intended for the dome. It appears to be a bold architectural achievement. Dubai has never been one to settle for anything less. Owing to its rapid growth, Dubai never established a uniform address system. In fact, until 2015, people may write particular instructions or draw a map in the space designated for an address line on a mailing label. Thank goodness 10-digit digits are being used as addresses, and I'm sure it's much simpler to be a delivery driver in Dubai these days. For you, that's Dubai. And to top it all off, the super-rich people who live in Dubai don't give the government a single cent of their salary. There is no income tax in Dubai. One another thing that sets Dubai apart is one of the world's most desirable travel destinations. I have no more to share with you today. Please remember to subscribe and give a like if you like the video.